Hello, folks, and welcome back to Board Game Dads. My name is Anthony. And I'm um, Eric. This guy, yeah, that's Eric. Uh, we're a couple of board game dads. <laughs> we love to talk about board games and random holidays and apparently the seasons as well because this is our second episode in our series of seasonal spotlight on board games. We're here talking about spring which is ironic, Eric, because you have what outside right. right now? We got about a foot of snow outside. There you and, go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 and I love the snow. I love the snow. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm a little over it. It's a bit much. Yeah. Already. Yeah. I agree. It's a bit much. Um, yeah. So Eric's got a, like a fresh foot of snow. And I've got, I think, a foot of, of remnant snow from last storm already. And it's supposed to snow here again overnight, so there's that. Um, but hopefully by the time you're viewing this, maybe that snow has melted away because we are talking about the season of spring. So, Eric, do you know what the term equinox means? Uh, like, well enough to explain it to everybody? I do not. Well... Equinox is a Latin term that basically translates to equal night, because on this day, the length of time of day and night is not exactly equal. There's like kind of no way that really happens, but it's, I guess, as close as you can get throughout the year. So there's that. Um, if you're a fan of sunlight, it's good news for you, because this is the time when that finally starts to change towards the getting more sunlight during the day um, and things like that. So warmer weather, yay. I don't know what the groundhog said this year, but whatever your local rodent reported is pretty irrelevant at this point. <laughs> I think it's it's the same rodent, right? I think it's just Punks Tony Phil from Pennsylvania. I, I don't know that like other states in the West or in the Central ha have their own groundhogs. There's a lot of local groundhogs around yeah? here, though. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's like Essex. They're and, not on TV, though. No, probably not. Probably not. We should get like a different type of animal and have it do some other sort of prediction thing and, and make a new. They had an octopus that would uh, predict the Stanley Cup winners. Oh, that's true. They do that <laughs> a lot for sporting events. They had yeah. some. They had some pandas doing some Super Bowl stuff uh, last month. Pandas. Yes, Panda Day video just came out last week. So go check that out if you haven't yet, because that's a fun one. Lots yep. of games about cute, cute panda bears. But we're here to talk about spring. And we're going to go ahead and kick things off here with our first game. Again, as usual, Eric and I are going to bring two games to the table to discuss. Might be an honorable mention or two. And then we'll sort of blather on about other random stuff. Um, so, Eric, you're going to start off with your first game here because it really does show us this whole transition. So the game that I want to talk about, the first game that I want to talk about is called Spring Meadow. It is the third in the Uwe Rosenberg trilogy of mm -hmm. these polyomino seasonal games. And it's a, it's a good one. It's similar to Indian summer in that the polyomino tiles have these little holes in them that if you get them all next to each other, you get some sort of a bonus in this one. You get uh, a separate tile that is not part of the ones that you're drafting. Okay. Uh, Otherwise, you have this this five by five grid, which I think is also an Indian summer yeah, of all the so. different all the different tiles and all the just randomized and not in any particular order. Mm -hmm. And you move from you know from column to column to column, and then around the corner from row to row to row, and you know basically which row and which tiles you're going to be able to draft on your next turn, mm -hmm. unless there's two or less in that. And that's in a two player game. And I think in a three or four player game, it's less than two. Um, once there's two or less, then that triggers scoring. So the okay. way scoring works, you have your your personal scoring, or your personal track, which is just a field covered in snow. Uh, and at the very bottom okay. of it is like a little bit of grass. And you're taking these grassy tiles and you're starting from the bottom. You're slowly thawing out all this snow and, and, and getting rid of it or shoveling it, however you want to look <laughs> at it. And so you, what you have to fill up complete rows. You can't leave one in there because only complete rows are going to score. And the very top row <clears throat> above your last complete row will also score for partial. So let's say okay. each row has 10 in it and you have three complete rows and then a partial of like four on the next highest count. You'll get 34 points. Okay. And once you've triggered that score, whoever has the most points gets a scoring tile. Once somebody has two scoring tiles, 
the game is over and they won. It's it's nice because it's a spring game. Yeah, it's but pretty it's cool also that it, got snow covered boards, so you know you can say, play it in the winter. You can play it in the spring. It's interesting that there's that it. It's sort of interesting interesting that it is a trilogy and not four games. I know that's not right. More common to do a trilogy, but it's it's weird because there's four seasons. You think he would just have done four different games, but it is cool that it's this transition one in this theme. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's nice that it, it, it does represent because I didn't know this going in. I we got it and I opened it. I was like, wow, the board's covered in snow. Like oh, this nice. is this is gonna go on our on our snow list next year when it snows. We're gonna start playing it. It's like the melting of the snow. So it's a, yeah. a, a whole new aspect of it. So now you have all three now, right? You played we do. all three? Right. So where do they do you have like a ranking of them that you like most? I, I don't have a ranking yet, but I like Cottage Garden the most. Okay. Uh, I'm not thrilled with the whole aspect of these tiles having a circle, like a, an empty spot, and you have to match them up, and then you get something. Um, in Cottage Garden, there was something similar to that, but there was like a potted plants that you wanted to leave open on the thing, mm. and uh, maybe some glasses that you wanted to leave open, and then you collect those. And then you had little cats that were like single tiles that would come and oh. just sit somewhere and take up a spot. It's my favorite. I still have to give Spring Meadow and Indian Summer, which I think we only played both of them once or twice. Mm. And so I got to give them a little bit more time before I can effectively say which one is my absolute favorite and which one is least favorite. Okay. Now, we yeah. do also have New York Zoo by Uwe Rosenberg. But it's not part of the trilogy, so we're not going to talk about that. So speaking of Spring Meadows, um, they are usually filled with spring flowers. And so my first game is called a little flower shop so in this game these flowers have already grown blossom and they're being harvested and you're trying to make the most beautiful window display of your flower shop to win this game by getting the most points this is a drafting game um i've only played it with two players so overall i like the game i think i will like it more with three or four because it's a drafting thing right so you know there's that but i don't that, I don't want to say I dislike the game because of that. That's just a player count thing. Um, but in this game, you're just drafting cards that are either uh, vases for you to plant, to put your flowers in. Or vases. Or vases, depending on where <laughs> you live, yes. Um, or they're flowers that you actually put into the vases. And then there's also some hanging plants that you can add into your shop. And then there's um, an order form. You can fulfill an order and get some money. And then some of the cards are just money. So really, you're just drafting and putting these things either in your storage for now or going ahead and putting them in a display. The vases have either one, two, or three types of flowers on them. And so those are the flowers you have to match to actually plant in there. Um, I found that I wanted to do more. And again, I don't know if this is a two-player thing because a lot of times the cards I was getting were just like, Ugh, there's nothing else to do with these. Like I can put this vase in my shop but I know I'm not going to have enough time to, to get the flowers because I've seen all the cards already. Those flowers are not coming back to me. <laughs> and at the end of the game, anything that's not filled up, these vases that are empty go into your, your trash pile, so to speak, and they, they're negative points. Uh, so, you know, that, that kind of sucks. Um, but it looks really cool. The artwork's really nice. And there's even these little, like I said, hanging plants. And I don't know, it's just the aesthetic is nice. It's nice to look at on the table. I like drafting games. I like games about flowers. Uh, can't wait to give this a try. I think with three or four players, I would enjoy it even more. Uh, so there's that. So maybe next time we get some games to the table, we can get this one out. Cool. Yeah. I'd, I love to give Melissa um, games about flowers for Easter or her birthday, which is in May or, you know, whatever, whatever summer holiday when there's flowers out. I just, it's something that I like to do. So this one, especially, you know, since you have it, if we get to play it and she likes it, definitely be a gift idea for her. Which reminds me, I'm so glad you said that because I totally forgot about this part. So this was a gift from my wife, Lauren, to me <laughs> for our anniversary, which the four-year anniversary is flowers and... What was it? Flowers slash... Fruit. Fruits, right. Thank yep. you. And so Lauren asked Eric, hey, are there any games <laughs> about fruit or flowers that I can get for Anthony? And he ran down a couple and and she was like, oh, we have that one already. And so Eric's recommendation was Little Flower Shop. So I thank Eric for that. 
I uh, appreciate the recommendation on that. I had a bunch of recommendations and she was I'm like, sure you did. We have that. We have that one. We also have that. <laughs> yeah. We, I already got that. And I was like, uh, what about this one? Um, yeah, I actually, I got blossoms for my wife for our four year anniversary. Cool. Very yeah. cool. So the game that I want to talk about my next game for spring is called the bottom of the ninth, right? So it's a baseball game because to me, Spring isn't just about flowers and the snow thawing and stuff like that, but it's also baseball season. Pitches and catches are reporting for duty this week, and we're going to get the show on the road even in a, in a pandemic year. Uh, so it's a very exciting time. I'm a Mets fan. I'm very excited about my team this year. We'll see how we do. But the game that I chose is called Bottom of the Ninth. Now, this game is a really cool game. It comes in a small little box, and it has a, a – a fairly small board, uh, but basically what you're doing, you're playing at the bottom of the ninth inning. So one team is the pitching team. One team is the batting team. If the batters can get a run, they win. If the pitchers can get them out, it's just assumed that in the next inning, the pitching team will be the batting team. They'll score. They'll win the game. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right. So the batting team has just this one inning to score one run. They win. So, there's this mechanic mechanism <laughs> where you the pitcher has to choose either high or low away and inside, right? Where you're going to throw the ball. So they're going to choose. They're going to pick their tokens, be like, all right, I'm going to throw this ball high and away. And then the batter has to guess, oh, is he going to throw it high and away, low and inside? Where's he going? And so they'll, they'll flip their tokens and then everybody will, you know, like show them at the same time. And based on who guessed what, or if the pitcher, gets guessed by both of them and the batter gets, you know, extra traits or or special powers on his swing. Uh, But if the pitcher gets the batter to guess them both wrong, then he gets an extra something on his swing. Mm -hmm. And then both players roll some dice. If the batting team rolls dice, that's higher than the pitcher's die roll. As long as the ball is a strike, but the ball, it doesn't matter. But if if the pitcher's die roll is a, it's a three, and then the batter rolls a, a three or higher. He says, it's a hit. And then both players grab the dice real quick, and they start rolling real quick. Whoever gets five <laughs> or six first says either safe or out. And then that's it. And you keep on playing throughout the inning, pitch by pitch. <laughs> and, you know, th- there's there's some more to it, obviously. The different batters have different strengths and things like that, and the pitchers have special pitches. But it's, it's a really cool game. I haven't found a lot of games about baseball that are worth anything or worth their weight. This one's really cool. And the game looks really great. It's got uh, the the, the ball and strike marker. You know, you flip it over. It looks like a little pack of piece of gum that you would get Mm -hmm. in a pack of baseball cards. All the player cards look like baseball cards. Fantastic production on this for such a small game too. And uh, I love it. So it's a good one. Yeah. There's a, there's a good amount of expansions for this game as well. Right there's at least two that we have. One of them is cool. The other one is, uh, I guess the, the company that made this, I can't, I can't remember the name. It's the same company that did uh Sentinels of the multiverse. So some of those oh, okay. characters are in here and, you know, so it's like superheroes s- pitching wow. and, and yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool or it's kind of lame depending on how you look at it. <laughs> I think it's kind of lame, but that's because I, I don't really like Sentinels of the Multiverse. It's just, it's not my game. Yeah, I don't, I used to own it. Um, right, it that's when I the, played it. One of the first games, or probably the first game that I that I actually sold, uh, and just didn't get to the table. Nobody I played with really liked it. Um, but that's besides the point. I, I do really like the look of Bottom of the Knife. The, it's one of those games that the whole package really comes together the board like you said is really small but it looks really cool the meeples right. are awesome with their little their little baseball hats on yeah. um and you know it's got those those cool looking old-fashioned old-timey baseball players and and i think that's what the game is about so i see your point on the the whole multiverse sentinels thing is characters kind of like eh, it doesn't really fit the theme yeah but you don't have to buy that expansion right <laughs> Yeah, this is a fun one for sure. Uh, I played it with you a couple times, and, and it's a blast. Um, some that dice rolling can get very intense when you're trying to get that five or six. And uh, I I will say this: when when you're playing this game, 
don't play this on like a marble table, right? Where yeah. if you roll the die, it's just gonna keep bouncing around because you you want to roll the die and have it, you know, roll once or twice and then know what it is so you can pick it up and roll it again. If you're rolling this thing and it's just bouncing all the way across the table and the other player is like rolling into a dice tray or something, you're gonna lose. Yeah, that's that's the bad news bears variant. You have to play yeah. on the glass table. <laughs> and I and I've done that before where we're just we're rolling the die and I gotta like sit there and wait for what seems like like 20, 30 seconds for the die to start, stop bouncing around it. <laughs> and, and meanwhile, I feel like Melissa's rolling and she's just, you know, rolling it against the box and she's just rolling like three <laughs> times for you. Ugh. It's cool. It's stressful when that happens. Yeah. But sometimes you want that in a game. Oh yeah, for sure. And again, I think that fits something else that fits the theme. That's, that's the bottom of the knife. Right. This is it. Right. This, this is it. Was on the line. I mean, that's, it's like you hit a little dribbler and now you're trying to run it out before they pick it up and throw you at it first. It does feel like you really want to play both sides, right? You don't you want to be the pitcher and the batter for an inning. You don't want to just do one or the other. Right. But that's not the game. And, and that, that could go on forever. Sometimes it seems like baseball games go on forever. So it's it's nice that it's just bottom of the ninth. I wonder if anyone has ever played bottom of the ninth as, as a variant and played like a whole game. Like nine innings, probably. That's interesting. Hmm. Oh, for nine innings? Yeah, that would be a long day. It would be pitch but, by pitch. Yeah, or I guess you could do six innings, maybe. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get to my last pick here. I already mentioned flowers that came about in Eric's Spring Meadow, and you know what? To get all of those flowers, we need a lot of help from some little creatures called bees and. A while and ago, there's no shortage of bees games no. for you to choose from with this. Exactly, exactly. And as I say, a while ago, one of the things Eric asked me was, "What's a game on your radar?" And I was like, "I just I want a bee game because there's so many of them now." And so I visited my friendly local game store the other day, picked up this game designed by Bruno Cathala called Queens. Um, it is a very abstract looking game that has a bunch of flower tokens and some honey pots got some nice little uh wooden components very similar now that you talked about how spring meadow and the mm -hmm. other ones worked very similar in that you set up a six by six grid right. and you move this one gardener token around and wherever that row is that he's in you can take x amount of those flowers and then however many you take one two or three you then move the gardener that many spaces around the grid um, and you're trying to basically gather these flowers on your player board. And when the time is right, you then take one of these polyomino pieces um, and, and, and harvest or rather plant the flowers on those things. So you put all those flowers down, you get points for how many you put down, you get honey pots if you made these, this color for the first time. Uh, it's a race to get that bonus as well. And it's really cool. Um, it was so easy to learn that Lauren and I played it in about a half hour, which is what the box time says, which rarely happens. Uh, so there was that. So my question is, all the polyomino shapes have five, and there's five different colors of flowers. So mm -hmm. let's say I put down um, a polyomino shape that has three blue, a white, and a red. And then a little bit later on, I put down another polyomino shape. Now, when I put down that first one, I'm going to score three points for the three blue. Mm -hmm. Now, when I put down another one, let's say it just has one of each color. And there's a blue that ends up next to the three blue. So now that's four blue. I get four points. Mm -hmm. And if there's one red that ends up next to the one red, then I get two points. Yes, that's okay. correct. So I, I'm going to score when I put down each polyomino tile based on the entire amount of tiles in front of me and the, the, the patterns of specific colors. Yes. As okay. long as they're adjacent. Yeah. As Got long it. as the colors are adjacent. Um, the other thing that you can do is fill a space with a hive. So each player gets three little right. hive tokens. And the reason those are relevant is because some of the flower tiles that you're taking have bees on them. And so if you place a hive on one of those spots at the end of the game, you'll get one point per B that's surrounding that uh, hive in all the eight adjacent squares. 
Um, so some of the tiles have two Bs. And that includes the diagonals, well, obviously. I guess yeah, it yeah, yeah. Diagonals. <laughs> And and so when you take those tiles with Bs from the grid, you can only take one. So you can never take two or three with Bs on them. Um, the only other tile that's different is the Queen B, which is the one singular large B. That lets you basically swap a tile, a flower that you already have in your garden, and put it back on your player board. The reason you might want to do that is because of those hives. So say you put a hive down early in the game, and you know there's two or three that don't have bees on it. Well, if you draft the queen, you can go ahead and switch one of those out, put right. the queen in there. You'll get one point, one more point than you would. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty cool. Abstract for sure. You know, it's it's not it's about flowers and bees, but it's really just about placing tiles and adjacency. It sounds like a fun game, man. I I want to I want to check this one out. I, I think uh, I think 2021 might be the year for me to get a couple of bee games. Nice. Yeah, yeah I, I I think. Um, because this one is so abstract, I think I could easily get another one and not feel like they're, you know, competing the same, for right. the same space. Um, that Honey Buzz game looks pretty cool. That's a little more play stuff. Yeah. All right. So that's my second uh, springtime game here, Eric. I think we covered all four. Do we, we have, have any honorable mentions for this category? I mean, there's more games that have bees. We just mentioned Honey Buzz, yeah. so there's an honorable mention. And there's, there's a ton a, more games about flowers and plants, right, too. There'll right. be a time for that. And uh, as far as baseball, there is Baseball Highlights 2045. I've never played it, uh, but I hear great things about it. So there we go. Three honorable mentions that usually we <laughs> list first. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Well, folks, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I hope you maybe look into some of these games. And again, as always, leave some comments. Maybe you have some games about spring or baseball or flowers or something that we did not mention. Let us know. And if you can go ahead and hit the little thumbs up like icon underneath this video, that would be great. And if you haven't subscribed by now, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. We're trying to get to that 100 mark where great things will happen. Eric, thank you again <laughs> for joining us. <laughs> uh, I love this doing this. Spotlight. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Folks, we'll see you next time. Happy spring. Let's go, Mets. <laughs> you got to love their chances. Looking good. Looking good this year. <laughs>